Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Today we're going to go through the calculations needed to tell you whether or not you can actually make a profit on a particular property. Now we've gone to the process of this point of getting something that you need to evaluate. We went out to an old mining district that only had one active claim on it. We claimed some ground. We found a vein that has gold in it. We took a representative sample of that vein. We brought the sample back. We crushed it up. We ran it over our processing equipment. We sent those samples off. We got the numbers back. And now we actually have all the data we need to do a quick calculation to see whether or not it looks potentially profitable. Now we're going to start with something called operating costs because if you can't turn a profit in your operating costs there's no sense worrying about capital costs. Operating costs are those things that are directly related to your day-to-day -day operations, your labor, your fuel, wear parts, maintenance, things like that. Now we're starting with an ore, the composite sample ran 20 grams to the ton. I'm estimating 70% recovery here. It's a little optimistic from the uh, original data we got, but I think I can bring it up to about that. And $1,200 an ounce gold would be $542 per ton is what's available to us. Now, it's a six inch wide vein. And we're going to need like a four foot tunnel or drift in order to mine it because I got to get through it. Height doesn't matter because it's near vertical. If it was horizontal, the height of the tunnel would matter more than the width. Now, half a foot, four foot, we have a 1 to 7 ore to waste ratio. In other words, we need to mine 7 tons of waste for every ton of ore we can get. Let's see how fast we can do that. Now our mining rate is the rate at which we can break and haul rock. With the Hilti, wheelbarrow, shovel, two people, we can do about a thousand pounds an hour. This is what we've actually done out there so we have a good idea of this, which is four tons per day for two guys working. The milling rate is about 250 pounds per hour. The bottleneck on that is the table. That can be jumped up pretty dramatically, but if we do, pretty soon the crusher will be the bottleneck, so it won't do us much good without spending a lot of money on a crusher. So we'll just keep it at 250 pounds per hour. That's one ton per day. Now, in order to get one ton of ore, we need to move eight tons of rock, ore and waste combined. At four tons per day, that's two days. Two people times two days equals four man days per ton of ore. The milling rate, one ton per day. Now, in order to mill it, you have to have someone feed the crusher, pull the crushed rock from the crusher, put it in the table. Uh, it feeds onto the table by itself, but then somebody's got to take the oversized rejects back to the crusher, and got to pull the tailings, fine tailings, coarse tailings, move them off of the, the table. And all this time you still got to keep track of what the table's doing. So, unless you got a big, strong, energetic fellow and a lot of caffeine, you're probably going to want two people to run the mill. With one person is possible, but it's exhausting. Two people is pretty easy. So, two people per day, two man days per ton of ore. So we get six man days per ton of ore is our labor. That's our total labor. Now completely excluding all the other costs which will be there, let's say that's the only cost in a ton of ore and that gives us $542 in our pockets. We divide that by six and my handy dandy calculator says
ninety dollars and thirty cents. I don't know about you, but I can do easier stuff for ninety dollars and thirty cents a day. So, right now, this is a no go. That's just not where we're looking. We're looking for at least double that before we'd be terribly interested. Now, what can change that will make that more interesting? First thing is, this $1,200 here, if the price of gold doubles, now we're looking at $180 a day minus the other expenses. That might get us where we're interested. The same thing can happen if we change the grade. Now that's something we can't change or is not going to change over time, but we might find a different ore body or a different spot on this ore body that might have a higher grade. What I want to do now is just play some games and say, okay, in a theoretical ore body, what are those criteria that are kind of the minimum rule of thumb criteria that make it interesting? If it's not this, well, we're not terribly interested in it. So, at current prices of gold, $1,200 an ounce, you probably want something 50 to 60 grams per ton, or, you know, one and a half, two ounces per ton to be interested in a six, six inch wide vein. If it's not at least that, why worry about it? It's too much work. Forget your capital costs, forget your consumables, no sense even worrying about it. What else could happen? Well, you could change the width of the vein. If suddenly that became a two foot wide vein, this ore ratio, or to waste ratio, suddenly goes one to one. Mining rate stays the same, milling rate stays the same, but in one day of mining, you get two tons of ore. So in three days, you can do two tons of ore and actually, this number here then becomes 1,084. Again, it just doubled the economics by going from a 6-inch vein to a 2-foot vein. Now, one thing you have to watch out for here, and I'll just start the board again. It matters whether the vein is vertical or horizontal, because you're going to need a tunnel to work in. Now, if this tunnel is four foot wide, this vein is two foot wide, then it's a one to one ratio. If this is seven feet high, which, you know, I'm six one or whatever, put a hard hat on me, six and a half feet, I'm going to have to be careful or the little irregularities are tend to give me a headache. So, let's go for a seven foot high tunnel, and now two sevenths, or about a three and a half to one ratio. So, same size vein, different orientation. Vertically, you have less waste you have to mine than if it's horizontal. This is a big difference. So, the other thing is, suppose the vein is wide enough, thick enough, vertical, whatever, so you can actually drive your whole tunnel in the vein. Something like that. Now you have no waste. That's extremely desirable. So those sort of factors can be important. As a general rule, if you're looking at, at veins, if you got a six inch wide vein, you're going to want one and a half, two ounces to the ton. If you got a two foot wide vein, you might be able to go half an ounce to the ton. Between half an ounce and one ounce is going to be your interesting uh, range. Now mind you, that's all recoverable gold. Now, here we have some more interesting things. What happens if you increase your tonnage? Let's suppose you have an operation with five tons per hour through the mill. And let's suppose you've got a plan of operations, you have a little bit of small heavy equipment, I, that's kind of an oxymoron, so small equipment, 
but uh, mobile earth moving equipment. Bobcat, little excavator, something like that. Five tons per hour is not at all difficult to move like that with one person can move that kind of material. You're probably going to have one person wanting to watch the mill while one guy is doing the digging. So, five tons per hour, let's suppose you want to make $200 per day times two people, $400. At five tons per hour, uh, all you've got to do is, uh, let's see, what is that, $50 an hour? Yeah. All I need to do is make $10 a ton. Operating cost. That's like a hundredth of an ounce per ton. Obviously, you're going to need to have a little more than that, but you can see if it's recoverable. This is why placer miners can make money on such low grade material. It's very cheap to move five tons per hour of placer. Um, a, a good sized dredge can move that, like an eight or a ten inch dredge. A small trommel, trommel might do, you know, 20 to 50 tons an hour. And so that's why they can do that at, you know, 10, 20 dollars per cubic yard in the gravel. They can make money at that. Hard rock mining, your costs are generally higher. As a general rule, if you're in the 5 ton an hour range, you're probably going to want about a tenth of an ounce to the ton. Now, this is your operating cost. We have something now called capital costs. If you can show an operating profit, fine. If not, you don't even need to get to capital costs. So, a, the one ton an hour operate, uh, one ton per day that we're currently using is about $20,000 in capital costs. Okay, the crusher is about eight thousand dollars. The table is going to run you six or seven. Lots of miscellaneous. You may have to build, a little, do a little road building, whatever. Call it about twenty thousand dollars. So, you need to make at least twenty thousand over your operating costs, over your labor to pay for your equipment. On a much bigger operation, it can easily go up to let's just say a hundred thousand dollars. For a micro scale operation, these are. This is pretty cheap here. This is not unreasonable at all. So you have a large capital cost you have to make back. How big an ore body would it take? Let's say take two foot wide vein, and it's say 100 feet long, 50 feet deep, and two feet wide. Let's multiply that out. Eh, I'll leave that there. So, we've got 50 times 2 is 100, times 100 is 10,000 cubic feet. Now we take 10,000 cubic feet, divide it by 27, times 2 for tons, And we wind up with 10,000 divided by 27 cubic feet to the cubic yard times 2 tons to the cubic yard in place. We get 741 tons of rock. Now, at, and this is Two ounces. Okay, at two ounces to the ton, you should be able to get an operating profit of about at least a thousand dollars a ton. So this 741 gives you 741 thousand dollars in operating profits, and yeah, that'll pay for your capital expenditures. Other capital expenditures can be permitting, bonding, road building, things like that. Other operating expenses are some consumables you might use depending upon what process. You might have chemicals you're using. 
Uh, you might have a lot of money for ground control depending upon the circumstances. That particular vein we're looking at there, we can't trench very well because the, the ground is so bad, even in a trench, one side likes to slough. We've got two sloughs we can see right now that are, you know, several tons have come into the trench. So the ground's not stable. You're going to need to spend money to make sure you don't become flat. And uh, it, can, it can be just anything. Some you use the expense as you go along. Others you have to put up front. You may start with a small capital expenditure like $20,000 since this is rich enough. Once you get bigger then you can upgrade your equipment, save the smaller stuff for prospecting your next prospect. Another thing is, is it's going to have a limited lifetime. Now this is $741,000 but it at one ton per day, you're making, you know, a few hundred dollars a day. You take that to that five ton per hour, 741 tons, divided by five, you wind up with uh, 100, I'm sorry, yeah, 170 hours, <laughs> and you're done? The ore body's gone? Um, everything's got, uh, mine life is always limited. The ore body will always deplete, the price will always drop, something will always stop you eventually. So, you have to look at the mine life, the capital expenditures, your operating costs, and your operating profits. So, you have exploration, where you look for stuff. Then you find a prospect. You take that and you sampling and testing. And this gives you data. From that data you go three ways. You can walk away. If the numbers are bad, and you don't see any way to make them better, walk away. There's a whole world out there. Look for something better. Don't waste your money. The numbers may be inconclusive but encouraging. You may have just taken one or two samples, and you have a large structure. And that means more exploration. You have to get enough data to make a good decision. And the final possibility is production. If these numbers are good enough, if you define all your numbers, your permits, your bonding, your access, water supply, things like that, then you can make this decision. Don't do it beforehand. I've seen guys literally spend two million dollars on a mine that they didn't have a guaranteed water supply for and then found out that they could only get enough water to lose money. Seriously, they could only process about one-fifth of the tons per hour they needed to make a profit. That's a lot of money to spend when a little research would have told you to walk away. Now here's another possibility that happens rarely but frequently enough and it's big enough money. Let's say the data indicates that production is possible but only with a much larger capital expenditure than you can put out. Now you can try raising money by starting a company and selling shares or the easiest way is simply to sell or lease the claims to a bigger mining company. Somebody who's got deeper pockets than you. You think, wow, that's, I'd hate to walk away from that kind of money. Well, guess what? Sometimes it's a lot better to let someone else spend the big bucks. Okay, so let's suppose instead of a nice small high-grade ore body, you've got a large low-grade ore body. 
Over by Gold Hollow, we have a hill that has a bunch of workings on it. All the way stumps run half a uh, tenth of an ounce to the ton or more. Uh, I ran some samples on some real waste stuff over there and it was running 0.07. So let's assume an ore grade or a mineralization of 0.05 ounces per ton. Ore is actually defined as mineralization that can be processed at a profit. And this hill is eh, conservatively 200 yards by 200 yards by 20 yards. Multiply that out. Eight, one, two, three, four, five. 800,000 cubic yards, and about two tons per cubic yard, 1.6 million tons. 0.05 is $60 a ton. So 60 times 1.6 million is 96 million. Now this is entrained gold. This is gold in the ground. It has nothing to do with recovery percentages, costs, or anything like that. Assuming it's easily heap leachable and stuff, and you can get permits cheap, and you could drill a well and get enough water, you could probably do that for half that cost, or about $48 million in profit, which sounds like a lot, but you got to put up a couple million bucks up front. So, a small mining company can theoretically do something like this. If you lease it to them, uh, you definitely want to get a monthly lease payment. Doesn't have to be much, one or two thousand dollars. Look at how much money we're talking about here. And it's also not a bad idea to get some guarantees. In other words, they're not just going to sit on it forever. They have to do so much work. And if they don't do that work of, of exploration and such, and it's just, they've just been sitting on it for a while, after, say, a year or two, you have the right to say, you know what, I'm tired of you just sitting on my property. i got somebody else who's interested in it. These get kind of technical, but... Basically, you want a monthly payment and some kind of work guarantee. Otherwise, they can just lease it and say, oh, we'll pay you 1% of whatever we get, and then never do anything. A lot of these companies are mining investors' pockets instead of actually mining the ground. They'll get something like this. They'll make up a nice prospectus. They'll, you know, go out there and, and market it to a bunch of people. They'll get a couple million dollars in investor money and spend it on themselves, their nice quarter million dollar a year salary. And when they run out of money, they just do it again somewhere else. So you want performance guarantees, you want a monthly payment, and you want a percentage. Something like this, you could probably get something like one or two thousand dollars a month and one percent of the net smelter return. And they have to do at least you know, $100,000 or $250,000 worth of exploration work a year. You can probably get something like that off of this project. But anyhow, if you get 1% of the gross, you always go on the net smelter return, which means percentage of the gross before costs. Um, that would be, you know, a nice cool nine, $960,000. Not bad. A million bucks and you don't have to do any of the work. Now, let's see what happens when we just double things. Now, this is one of the things that people don't often realize. Let's suppose we just double these numbers. Now you think, well, it's going to be double the size, but it's not. We still got five zeros. However, it's now four times four times four which is 1664. So now you got 6,400,000 cubic yards or uh, what is that? Well, 12 million tons 
Make it real simple. This goes up by a factor of 8. Okay, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Since these are all doubled, it goes up by a factor of 8. Now you're looking at almost a billion dollars in the ground. It doesn't take much. 400 by 400 by 40. That's less than a thousand feet square and 120 feet deep. That's, well, sorry, 1,200 feet square and 120 feet deep. It's not very big for as big mines go. But that gives you an idea of what can happen. And what you can see just examining the surface is probably less than what's underneath you. You can't tell without drilling, and unless you've got deep pockets, as in hundreds of thousands of dollars that you can afford to throw away, drilling can get really painful really quickly. So, this is how you can turn low-grade ore that you can't make money on into something that's extremely valuable to you. So to synopsize, the smaller the ore body, the higher the grade has to be. Six inch wide vein, you're looking one and a half, two ounces to the ton to make it break even. Two foot wide vein, half an ounce to one ounce to the ton. Got a good chance of making money here. Lower grade, you need a lot more tonnage and you either need to be able to, to do a lot of throughput yourself or you might want to go to a larger mining company. If you have a large ore body with a small high grade section, you might be able to go in, high grade that section, run that in your small, cheap processing equipment, and get your capital to expand, or just get a good chunk of change and then sell the rest to a big mining company and walk away from all the work and hassle. It's up to you. What do you want to do? First thing is you've got to find the ore body and those are your basic criteria you're looking for. Six inch wide vein, got to be good. Two foot wide vein, eh, it's got to be pretty good. Half an ounce to an ounce. Six foot wide vein where you're mining nothing but ore, yeah, that you can probably run down to a quarter of an ounce to half an ounce to the ton and make enough money to make it worth your while. Especially if you can run mechanized equipment, if it's got extent. Bigger than that, you can go down to a 0.05, half, you know, 0.05, five hundredths of an ounce per ton, tenth of an ounce per ton. If you can find a good size hill like that, you might be able to make a lot of money selling it to somebody else. Anyhow, that's how you make money gold mining. That's how you do the calculations. Don't fight with the numbers. The numbers will always win. If it doesn't pencil out, walk away. It'll save you a lot of grief and a lot of money. Happy prospecting and keep it safe.